what's going on here? This is an observed value. This is an actual golfer. This golfer, he hit it a little bit harder, a little bit faster, 105, put it at 277. But she goes, okay, that, that makes sense. But she's wondering why this is less, but this is already at a what? 274. So that, the reason what happened was because these are observed. And it's, all we have is a line of predictions. But that dude right there, he's right here. Boy, he was way above average. One. That's why. He was like, he was above average for that 103. You know, he had 103 clock speed. So there's other things involved with this club. This not only just speed of up, right? That's what we're thinking. We're like, it's not just, it's not going to be a perfect prediction. There must be other things involved that can happen like that. Nice observation, too. Can I ask you a question? Oh, sure. Say somebody hits at like 120 miles per hour. So we cannot use that regression line on this because that is beyond, beyond the domain is bit, right. Boy, that is brilliant. That's, we're going to make that the next question. So if you didn't hear Art, you didn't hear this, I'll explain it to you. We're going to make that the next question. Is everyone okay with G? <coughs> and when here's all, look how accurate it was. But see how close we were? We're just estimating. That was good enough. So, hey, last question, letter H. This is what he just mentioned. All right. So I'm going to put it in words so you can copy this so we know exactly what he was talking about. Would it be appropriate? This is going to be a yes no question. Would it be appropriate to use the regression line or the regression equation? to make an estimate or a prediction for 120, that's what you said, isn't it? Yeah. All right, 120 miles per hour, question mark. I'm going to erase this residual part. I will leave myself a note though. I know we got this residual. This residual was 3.7. I'll leave that for our notes. And you and I are going to put yes or no here. And then here we're going to explain. We're going to explain why. All right. Would it be appropriate? So you know what we do? Right, here's a line. 120 be way over here. There's the line. There's the scope of data there, right? Welcome to statistics, everyone. That 120 is outside this what? Domain. That scope of data. Scope of data. It's outside of it. So the answer is question. Welcome to statistics. We're going to say no. We're going to say no. They're saying is it appropriate? And explain why. It's outside the scope of data. So you don't use uh, domain in statistics? You can use that word domain if you want. Uh, That's good. I want to use the word domain here. You definitely could do that. It's outside the scope or the domain of the data over there. So and when, when I'm saying scope, let's come over here. What am I looking at in my eyes? Not these. I was looking over here. And what was the lowest? 99. And what was the highest? 105. That's outside the scope. You go, well, why can't you do it? I know, it probably wouldn't hurt, right? Like, if you did this in real life, and you published this, and you were talking about it, I'm sure you could mention it, you know? You could say, hey, this is what we get for 120, but you would also want to discuss how it's not so appropriate, because this went straight line from here to here. We're trying to what? This is called extrapolation. Extrapolation is dangerous in stats. Would you put that down? Extrapolation. Can I get that word? Extrapolation. We're extrapolating. Is dangerous. That's when you go beyond the scope of data. Um, unfortunately, people do it all the time. Unfortunately, people do it all the time. But anyway, it went straight line from here. Is that? Are we trying to just? Oh, that means it's always going to do a straight line? No. Things in this world do what? They go up. Maybe they what? Level off or something like that. Or maybe they go up and then they go exponential or something. So. I'm sure it wouldn't hurt to do this, but you would want to discuss that you're extrapolating because the scope of the data only covered from here to here. Does that make sense?
So hey, when you answer this question, you practice these out of the textbook, and you got to answer a question like this, would it be appropriate to use this value? Just look in that column of the x values and see what the lowest is and the highest is, and if that number's not in there, you're going to say no, right? Cool. Yeah. Uh, they do this all the time. You've heard that, right? They look, oh, what happened from the year 1990 to the year 2010? <gasps> oh my gosh, the world's going to blow up, right? Mm -hmm. And then, right, then we find out, you go, hey man, we're going to blow up, does it? Right? So that's what they do. They do that. And don't, hey, somebody take an algebra class. Don't sometimes things go up and then they what? Go down. Yeah, I'm not saying this would, but things happen like that in the world. Go up, go down, periodically. All right. Hey, great job with this. Liz, I am going to get that question as we do a review. I just thought I want the last thing to <coughs> find all the residuals. Wouldn't that be cool just to get all the residuals to that? And then we can make a residual plot. So that was the last I want to do. Can we make a residual plot? Let's just look at all the residuals. We call this a residual plot. So what we'll do is, I mean, for the x I used, what was the x's again? Bless you. Club speed. I'm going to put the club speeds down again. What was it? 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. Okay. This won't take long. We'll have plenty of time to review. This will be fun. We'll just make a we make plot of all the residuals. And I'll discuss why that's important instead. But <coughs> so we're going to make a what's called a residual plot. So I put club speed down here, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what it was, club speed. But I want to answer the y-axis. Don't put distance, because we'd be back there. On this y-axis, let's label that as residuals. But look, you're going to want to get some negatives in there. Because don't you think we're going to get some negative residuals? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make your, your y-axis here. Make sure it goes down a little bit and above that <laughs> x-axis a little bit. So we can just put like a 1, 2, 3, 4, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I'm sure we'd be fine with that. Residuals are very small numbers. So probably if you got to like 1, 2, 3, 4, we'll be fine. Hey, I'm going to put one in here. We already found one residual. What was the residual at 103? 3.7. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to put our first dot. But uh, I thought this would be a neat exercise. And let's just go find the residual for all of these. Sound cool? And we'll just make dots. And I'll talk about it. It's called a residual plot. All right. Let me start out. And if you want to do all the tedious calculations, I'll be glad to do it. That's not hard. So I'm going to go in here, hit clear, and I'll do, what's the next one, Y value? 257. Hey, 257 minus parentheses 3.166 times 100. 100. Minus 55.797. I don't want to rush anyone, but do you agree this should give me the residual for the first one? Mm -hmm. Y minus Y hat, right? So I'm blind. I forget where it is. I don't know if it's above or below. Let's see what we get. So for the first one I get, ooh, negative 3.8. And what was the X value in that one? 99. 100. 100. So when I'm going to go for 100, there's 100. I'm going to go down about negative 3.8 here. And we all got six left. That's what I mean. This won't take long. Has anybody in here ever used second enter, which is called the entry button? I'm going to hit, would you do it with me? Hit second enter. Second and then enter. You know what it does? It puts everything I had on my screen before. But allows me to go back and change these numbers. What can I change this to now? Uh, I'll use the one. Two, six, four. And then I'll make this 100. I'll turn that into a what? 102. It's just quick. So it's called second entry. It's called the entry button, but second entry you get. Oh, negative 3.135. Right? So I'm going to put that one down at 102. Almost done. 102, negative 3.135. All right, we got five residuals left. 
I'll do the next one. Second item. What's the next estimated residual? Um, we did the 103, 274, so I'm going to make this 266. And I'll go over right here and I'll make this 101. Boom. All right, that's about a 2. So this one's going to have residual 2. For the 101. Boom. 4 left. How about second enter? 105, 277. 11. 105. I get, ooh, that is close. 0. 0.367 at the one. Look, it's about right here. <laughs> it's right above the lot, x axis. Three left. And we just got to do these three right here. So how about the 263 and the 100? Second enter. Let me just see what we get here. There's other ways to do this, but this is fairly quick. 263 minus, I also want to show everyone in the class that, that entry button. It's kind of cool. And I get 2.197 for that one. All right, I'll put it over right here. 2.197 at the 100. It's about there. Two left. The next one's 99 with a 258. I'm just going to have to delete. Point three six three. That's at the 99. Everyone, thanks for being patient as we just get all these residuals. We got one more. Second like another. And I'm going to put over here the last one, 275 minus 3.166 times 1, oh, let me just insert a 5 there, minus 55.797. Okay, that's about negative 1.6 for the last one. Negative 1.6, there it is. So I just wanted you to see this thing. We should have eight dots on the board. You'd be like, couldn't we do this with the calculator? Oh, sure we could. I prefer that we see this on the board. I want you to see this. What's behind all this? So let's see. We got our eight dots. Thanks for being patient with us. See. Hold on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There they are. That's a residual plot. Why did I do all this? Everyone, if you ever do linear regression, if you ever do linear regression, I encourage everyone in here, like you do a presentation or a project or publish something, I encourage everyone here to do a residual plot as well. Because what you want to be able to demonstrate is a residual plot, there should be no pattern. <coughs> Let me get on these days again, no pattern to these dots. If there's no pattern, this gives great, great strength to your argument that you have a linear relationship. All right? So having a residual plot with what? No pattern whatsoever to the dots is further strength behind your argument that you have a linear objective. Remember at the beginning of this problem, I said this suggests there appears to be a linear relation. Remember that? There appears to be. Well, this gives a even, it strengthens your argument. A residual plot with what? No, no pattern. pattern. Just the scattered dots. I mean, they're all over the place, right? Now, of course, you go, what should you do, though, if there was a pattern? And what I mean by pattern, maybe the dots get something like this. What if you had your residual plot, and you go, yeah, but what if something went like this? Like, you saw like some kind of curved pattern or something like that? What does that indicate in real life? It means you shouldn't use linear regression. You should use another type of regression. That's what it means. You should try something else, maybe exponential or maybe quadratic or something like that. Now, everyone, that's actually, I'm using that word scope. That's beyond the scope of our course, elementary statistics. We don't get into other types of regression. But it's good to talk about, right? You know? I mean, for instance, with this calculator, you want to see it? You want to try other types of regression? So if you had a pattern, that would indicate you'd want to do what? Use some other type of regression. Use another regression model. But in our linear regression, is fine, isn't it? So I'm going to hit these lights. I just want to show you this. It's easy to look at other types of regression. So I'm going to go down here. I'll do one of these. Okay, here. Clear a screen. Stat calc 
Go down to number four, right? Stat calc. This time I'm not going to four. Everyone do cubic? Hmm. Who remembers an algebra well, X cubed graph? That does like a what? Snake? Like, so when I'm going to hit that, I'm going to hit bars, y bars, enter, enter, enter. And uh, look at my y equals. Look at that thing. But look at the graph. <coughs> See how it's curving? Isn't that cool? So there's other types of regression. I just want to point that out. Why, why would I ever want to do this? You know, I know it's beyond the scope of a course, but it's just interesting to talk about is the fact that if I had a residual plot, maybe I had some patterns or something, I would look at other types of regression. It doesn't have an R value, but it does have something called R squared. That's called the coefficient of determination. You know what you could do? You could look at all the models to see when you get the highest R squared. So what's that R squared? 0.89? What was the R squared for our linear model? So again, that's called the coefficient of determination. Step, calc, number four, bars, y bars, enter, enter, enter. What was our R squared? Oh, 0.88. It was a little higher, wasn't it? So you might say, oh, I could use cubic codes. Does that make sense? So I just want to point out there is other types of regression. In our course, though, we only do what type, though? Linear. We're only doing straight line, linear regression. Cool. So everyone, great job at that. For the remainder part of class, I'm just going to get any review questions you have on all this. If you're like, do I have to make a residual plot on the test? No, you don't. <coughs> you don't have to make a residual plot. But I think it's important you know this. If you had a residual plot and there's no pattern to the residuals, what's that telling you? That's good news if you're using a straight line to represent your data or model your data. That makes your length, your straight line, regression line, be a decent, decent method of prediction. All right. Hey, uh, the first question I'm going to go over, a student asked me this right at the beginning of class. I thought it would be good to do during our review. It was in 3.4. 